Hello and welcome to the NBS Show, episode number 262. I am your host, Norman Sanso. Joining me today is Cal Payne. Hi, everybody. Hey, Cal. How are you doing, man? Doing okay. I'm holding in there. The new season is starting and it's busy as usual over on EQD.、Um, it's a little more hectic than usual with all the crazy <laughs> scheduling problems we're having right now with the whole <laughs> Canadian release and USA release thing. <laughs> You're telling me, like, Uh, remember last season where, oh,、uh, we get an episode a week and then, oh no, the hiatus for three months, oh no, what do we do? It's now like, it's overloading <laughs> with more episodes. Like, what, what do we do? <laughs> oh my god, this episode, no. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've never had a, I've never had a season where we've known almost all the episode titles so early in a season. <laughs> That is rare too. It's just nuts. And it's gonna, it's gonna be interesting,、um, with the Canadian releases because at their current pace, we're gonna have the season done in July. <laughs> That's what I've been wondering at the same time too. It's like, to, to me, um, I've been watching this online for a very long time now and it's always once a week, once a week. Even if we, uh, get a future episode out, Those are usually leaks from iTunes or some other country that accidentally show it in advance or whatever it is. Like those kind of, those kind of things are rare. But now oh, oh,、yeah. it's like back to back, back to back to back. It's like, oh my, I watched the recent Father Try episode last week. What now? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a big problem because right now we have like, we've got a poll going and there's a, A sizable portion of people that just want to watch the US release, but there's a big portion that want to watch the Canadian release. Right now it's not a massive problem because we still have a little bit of overlap. Like the Fluttershy Leans In episode was today and that was、mm-hmm. shown on, in Canada last week, but the episode that's being shown in Canada right now,、um, that's brand new is going to be, <laughs> is going to be the Saturday episode next week and Canada will be Slowly getting further and further ahead. So it's going to be hard to avoid spoilers. Yeah. And Canada is showing two episodes a week, right? Yep. Yep. Oh. So、nice. with each passing week, they get like one week ahead of the US showing. And it might even get even worse if a Discovery family decides to do a like couple week hiatus like they did last year. So. Oh, It's going to be hard to avoid spoilers if you're going to be just、um, a person that watches the US release. Oh yeah, or get the HD iTunes version or whatsoever. That one has been a crazy one too because a few weeks ago, or I think the last episode that was on iTunes was supposed to be the Mod Pie episode.、Mm-hmm. And that didn't release the next day. That came out, I think, a week later or something like that. Yeah, it did. So it's, <laughs> It's all messed up all over the place. So hopefully iTunes gets back on schedule and releases the episode that aired today relatively quickly so people can, people who can't catch it any way else can catch it on iTunes. I mean, they are paying for it.、Yeah. <laughs> they deserve to watch it quickly. Oh yeah, true, true. Still,、um, all these episodes out, all the potential spoiler or synopsis for the future episodes are getting people hyped. And you know what? We as fans kind of deserve the hype. But talking about deserving of stuff, um, the MLP crew, they recently were awarded two Leo awards, right? Uh, nominated for two Leo awards, actually. And,、ah. and that's actually, um, I think a first because I've been covering the Leo awards for a while. Every year around this time,、um, the nominations come out. And usually, um, MLP gets one nomination for, it's usually a song by Daniel Ingram. And this year they have two. And I was really surprised to see that 28 Pranks Later was getting a Leo nomination for its, um, its sound, which was, which was interesting. That's an interesting category well, in all of its own. True. But, but if you think about it, um, like if you really think about it, it's interesting how they did it because it's, A zombie flick, yet it's pastel colored ponies. <laughs> yeah, it's, it was an interesting episode last season, that's for sure. And I guess I did have some pretty cool, you know, spooky sound effects and stuff like that. So it's, it's good to see that the team is getting recognized that way. And of course, some、um, Hearth's Warmy Tale is,、um, being recognized for its music. 
So, and I think that was like the musical highlight of the season last year. So it, oh, yeah. it really deserves the nomination. Hopefully they'll win at least one of them. If not both of them, that'd be great. Yeah, we, we as fans hope that they win both because, well, we're biased. <laughs> of course. We love the show, so we definitely are aiming pretty high. Yeah, but still, um, it's just awesome to know that uh, the show's getting recognition this way. And yeah, it's just too awesome. Yeah, especially for a show that's, you know, getting kind of old. I mean, we're in our seventh season. The Ponies turns seven in October. So it's nice to see that the quality is still, you know, is still there that they continue to get nominated. So that's always a nice thing to see. Yeah, and from its humble beginning of being a show for selling product to a show that's, well, still selling product, but we have our own marriage now. (laughs) Yes. Uh, so, Kel, for the people at home who don't know, you're one of the guy who posts on EQD. For example, you post the MLP up for two Leo Awards and other things. Uh, for example, the Equestria Girls DVD from Shot Factory and whatnot. So, mm-hmm. what else do you do on EQD besides posting? Well, I'm the secondary admin on um, Equestria Daily. I've been in that position since late 2012 um it was during um everfree northwest first um convention i became admin um while everyone was away so i could handle things and then just kind of stuck um but on the site i handle uh, nightly roundups uh, comics nightly discussions morning discussions plushy posts craft posts customs posts um i used to do the tumblr spotlight when that was really a big thing when Tumblr Pony was huge. Um, I used to do the artist spotlights. I need to get back on that. Um, I post just regular news and um, I maintain the meetup map on the site. I maintain the game index on the site, which I am actually way behind on. I need to get on that this summer. I also maintain the tutorial page and I run events like the um, artist training ground, which will have one this summer for people who are watching. And Pretty much um, anything else that just kind of needs posting. If Seth's not around or I see it first or something like that, it gets posted. <laughs> so it's a lot of stuff. So what happened behind the scene? Like everybody thinks that EQD is this uh, pony news factory thing where news comes out automatically. Like you guys get the first dips on pony news. It's like, oh, the pony uh, news machine. Like if you want to know anything about ponies, go to EQD. <laughs> So, how do things run in the background? Um, I kind of know by fan submission because sometimes I see postings like, oh, DM29 noticed the difference in um, No Straits Hodge Cutie Mark or something like that. Yeah, um, how it runs behind the scene. Well, the big thing is is that we're a big community-driven website. So, all news is actually emailed to us because we, as a staff of only about... Um, maybe about 15 people and not everybody's like, you know, on full time. A lot of us do this voluntarily. Uh, Seth and I are probably the only real people that are like full time. We rely on a lot of people out there to send in news that they see from around the internet, whether it's noticing that there's new synopses or episodes on zap to it, or, you know, like the shout factory DVD release that was revealed. Um, Recently, that was also sent in. Uh, sometimes we have some people with um, unique access to information that we work with, and so we sometimes get like exclusive coverage on certain things, like the recent dumping of a bunch of titles and synopses and stuff like that has been <laughs> coming from a certain person that we've been working with and been confirming their sources and stuff like that. But what it comes down to is basically EQD runs by cooperating with other fans out there, and it would be impossible for us to really run the website and post news if it wasn't for the many, many eyes and ears that we have out there that send stuff into us. Ah, so basically, uh, AQD is a community-driven site where if anybody has anything, they just share it with you guys and you guys make a nice article out of it. Mm-hmm. Exactly, yeah. It, we couldn't do it without people sending stuff in. It really is, a, um, in my opinion, a a personification of the fandom at large because... It's it's more than just the people behind EQD that make things happen. It's everybody that 
send stuff in that makes things happen. I do notice that too. And when you mentioned you had volunteers, I do notice that you also had Silver Quill on there, um, posting comic reviews. And yeah, I think it's basically comic, comic reviews. Yeah, um, Silver joined up with us um, pretty recently, within the past um, two years, I think. It, um, I can't exactly remember when he came on exactly, but yeah, um, we even have big people in the fandom doing guest spots like like Silver writing our, his own articles and stuff like that. And of course, he has the popular um, Appreciation Day videos, which are really <laughs> nice. I really like those. Yeah, we have volunteers, everything from, you know, people that are known fandom entities like Silver Quill, and we've got fan fiction writers, and one of our volunteers, of course, made the um, Equestria Daily app, the app that um, is on iTunes and Google Play, and we just got a whole range of people that volunteer. Yeah, and I also see you guys already have a mascot or a mascot OC for the page. So you guys have been busy, really, really busy since I last talked to you guys. Oh yeah, we're always trying to uh, find new ways to uh, cover certain things in the fandom and stuff like that. We've really grown a lot since since we uh, since I have first been on the show, and even in the past year and a half since I was last on the show, um, things have changed a lot. And um, personally, I noticed the trend, or not really a trend, I noticed that, um, have you heard of Zootopia News Network? Oh, Z- CNN, yeah, Zootopia? Yeah, Zootopia? Yeah, not the movie, but the movie is one thing, but a uh, fan website that oh, does oh, Zootopia yes. News. Yes, um, I, I heard about that through the grapevine. I heard it's kind of modeled on, um, Equestria Daily, which is, which is an honor. Um, it's, it's cool to see that the people thought that our format was, uh, decent enough to use for their own website. So that's really cool. We like that. Essentially, it works. Like, you have, how do I put it? Um, EQD is clean. Like, it's very tidy. Okay, so comics. People like comics. So get a bunch, put it up. Oh, music. People like music. Get a music, put it up. Oh, fan fiction. People like fan fiction, but they're too long. Okay, let's have some proofreader do it. Oh, you're done? Okay, give us the news and we put it up <laughs> and so on. Yeah, it, that's one of the things I like about our system. It, it could be cleaner, and over time we've added more tags and separated things out a little bit easier so people can find them and stuff like that. Um, so we're always improving, but I, li- I like the system that we have. It's just it's just about coming up with new ways to get people to the content that they want. Yeah, tagging is one thing. <laughs> I'm guilty of not tagging the website for easy access. It could be hard to um, remember which um, tags to put on and coming up with new tags you're like man why didn't we do this before this is such a good idea <laughs> uh well you live and learn you guys are running around what um six years now running or um EQD started in yeah um early 2011 <laughs> in january i think and yeah so we had our sixth birthday this year and we're going on we're going on six and a half now so we've been here a long time if a formula works, why fix it? Just tweak it to make it more better. Yeah, that's what we've been doing is is tweaking. Is uh, there was a, when Seth created the site way back then, it had um, a good foundation, but we've been trying to improve it since then, and I think we're headed in the right direction. If people at home wants to see how EQD was back in the days, there's a website called the Wayback Machine. So that oh, <laughs> try, try looking at it, see how it goes. <laughs> That's right. I haven't thought about looking at EQD from the Wayback Machine. I have some screenshots of old EQD, like when it hit 10 million views for the first time, and it looks so different back then. So different. Yeah. Oh, the Wayback Machine. Oh, there's something. Uh, but talking about history past, and well, you mentioned Short Factory before. Um, it seems that, well, Short Factory is releasing a DVD um, with summarization of the Equestria Girl special mm-hmm. that everybody psyched up for. And this is pretty cool. And this, I'm getting mixed reaction with this in my head because, um, Poland is having it on a weekly basis. And also, uh, US is going to have it on Netflix and Short Factory is going to have it on DVD. So it's like, hmm, what now? Yeah, that's one of the other things about this, um, about this season is not only is, you know, um, Canada showing episodes early and at a quicker pace, but Poland's going to be 
showing these shorts before anyone else, I believe, and that <laughs> they're going to end up on the internet and either someone's going to have to translate them for, you know, an English audience or, well, any audience. And <laughs> it's going to be, it's, it's just a little messier than, than usual, I have to say. <laughs> yeah. This is it, season seven or this year for ponies. It's really, really interesting in terms of what they're really doing like they're pushing content out like mad um the equestria girl stuff from what i understand south america and poland and other probably other countries um they're really liking the equestria girls i think um it's more popular in those countries rather than the states well I, I, there is certainly a decent amount of popularity of it in um south america i believe because a lot of, in fact a lot of our previous leaks for yeah um for content for Equestria Grills has come from people that have been dubbing the South American release, posting things on like Instagram and stuff like that and getting little sneak peeks through that and little bits of information here and there. So it's, it is, um, I believe a popular market in South America. I don't know so much about, um, Eastern Europe, but Equestria Grills has gotten, um, more popular as time has gone on. They've, put out some pretty good content for that series and i think a lot more people like it than they used to when it first came out oh yeah i remember when it first came out people were oof, people were not happy uh, and they wanted a real pony movie a uh, few years later like <laughs> coming this year end of october um we are getting our wish finally yeah a lot of people back then it was it was indeed that um People were upset that there was going to be this this new series, and they weren't even ponies, and it was going to have be in theaters because the first um the first Equestria Girls movie was in theaters. I don't know if they put the second one out there, but the first one definitely was. I think the second one was in theaters on a limited run. Like I was surprised too. Yeah, I think it was a very limited run compared to even to the first one. And I saw the first one in theaters, but yeah, there was a big um, there was some big upset over that and made people wonder if we were going to get a pony movie. But that's all disappeared now that there is a big, big pony movie coming, much more, yeah. much more hyped up and everything than Equestria Girls was. So. Everyone's looking forward to that. And you're right about the pony content. It's, it's just crazy this year because, you know, we have a full season. We got these three specials that are coming and we got the movie. And what, what else do we get? Well, all the merchandise, all the merchandise that come with oh, that. Yeah. Uh, Toy Fair was absolutely massive this year with pony stuff. And this year we've also got the brand new tabletop, um, pony game, you know, the little RPG. Yeah, um, I think Tales of Equestria, that, that came out. Yeah, yeah. And wow. A friend of mine picked that up just the other day, actually. So we've well, got that, oh, and wow. the comics are starting to really push to be tied in with the show a little bit, and there's just all sorts of stuff coming out. So it's a good, t it's a good year to be a Pony fan. Yeah, I mean, like people who kind of left the show after season three, they well, it's their loss. But as for <laughs> hardcore or dedicated fans, like wow, they're giving us a lot of things. Like, um, especially like you mentioned the tabletop game, and one of my things I'm really excited about is the art book for the movie that's coming out in August, mm -hmm. if I remember right. Yeah, you're right. Um, it, it's coming out in August. I remember posting about that. Two hundred page um art book. It's gonna be beautiful. Yeah, but unfortunately for people who don't want spoilers, yeah. they're not gonna open it till. <laughs> yeah, that's the, that's the thing is that when this when this art book comes out, I bet you we're going to we're going to start seeing scans of certain things that are really interesting um, ending up on the internet. So people are gonna have to be careful once that comes out because we still have. Oh yeah. Because when it comes out, we'll still have two months till the pony movie, so it's gonna be an interesting time. <laughs> Yeah, in before somebody leaks it online, like, uh, went to, with, with, with a cam rip and like, mm, okay. <laughs> That's I, interesting. I bet you before the end of the month, someone will have can rip the entire book and put it on the internet. <laughs> I bet you. I do. 
the, the book's going to be obviously the first thing to be up. Uh, Derpy Baru, be careful. Spoiler texts are about. Oh yeah, if, if you're if you're a, if you're a Derpy Baru fan, you want to be careful around that time when 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 August eighth comes around. Be careful what you what you're looking at on Derpy Baru. You might want to get the um movie um the movie tag blacklisted for a little while. Uh, but still, um, it's in August, right? So the DVD for the Quest goes out. So keep yourself busy with that. <laughs> oh yeah, especially if the um, especially if you're watching the Canadian um airings of the show and you're afraid of a long hiatus, at least you're gonna get the Quest Girls specials, and they'll give you something to talk about. It looks like the specials have have some pretty interesting plot lines, especially the third one. The third plot line oh, is yeah, would... pretty interesting if you've seen it. <laughs> oh. I've I've read it. I I'm excited. Like wow, I I can't wait for that one character to come in. Like wow, exactly. People are going. It's been a dream for a lot of people out there. So I think people are going to be pleasantly surprised. I know, uh, but still, uh, talking about surprises, right? <laughs> um, it seems that the guys at DHX kind of uh, created OCs. Or how do I put this? Like uh, the new anchor for. Today, America Today? Yeah, the, um, the Today Show. Uh, they got Pony Fight. Like, wow. <laughs> Usually I won't talk about this because, well, it's a random animation. Any Tom, Dick and Harry could have done it. But um, this Tom, Dick and Harry is official. So it's like, hmm, or alrighty then, it's official. So, <laughs> uh, wow. <laughs> yeah, Um. well, recently... Um, there's been a lot of promotion for MLP um, recently. Um, if you have been watching Discovery Family and stuff like that, they've been doing a lot of um, interesting uh, promotionals this year that are very much that reminds me of the Hub a lot. Like, oh, a, a few weeks back with the 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 Fresh Prince parody. Oh yeah, that, that one was awesome. It's a bit strange when you think about it because <laughs> who are they aiming for? Well, I imagine they're aiming for people in our age range. Like I, I'm 30, and I remember the um, I remember Fresh Prince. So I would imagine it's not a it's not an animation meant for their target demographic, but for people like us, which is which is why it reminds me so much about the Hub because the Hub did a lot of things like that. You know, shout outs to our particular fan base. Everyone in the fandom still remembers that um, Equestria Girls. Uh, promo they had a long long time ago um oh, equestria yeah. girls as in the the song that but that one <laughs> that one uh thing they put together not not the you know the not the series yeah, i think it was the Katy perry parody song of california Girls. yes you're right yeah it, it's that and it, it had that those kind of vibes because it just felt like something that was focused on it's on the show's adult um audience uh, yeah. Especially if it's a Fresh Prince on parody, because I don't think anyone who's like eight years old watching the watching Ponies now even knows what the Fresh Prince of Bel Air is. Yeah, th- that is like uh, very unusual. Oh yeah, even if you don't know Fresh Prince, though, it's still fun to watch. <laughs> but uh, tying back to um, the Today Show, uh, I think it's just a bunch of their. I think it's just um, their way of just promoting Ponies this year because the, you know the movie's coming out. And even if DHX didn't make this, it might have been something that um, Discovery Family or Hasbro put out to help get um, MLP into the public eye. A couple of weeks ago as well, um, Pony uh, rang in the NASDAQ Stock Exchange, and they got a big plug for the movie there too. So they're doing a lot of little promotional things out in the mainstream media where people you know, will see it. Yeah, that one was strange. That that one was really, really strange. Like, Pony <laughs> Nasdaq, really? What? <laughs> I'm all for one for promoting the show in strange and interesting ways, but that one was way too strange for me. Well, it, it got um Pony on the big screens at Times Square, so it must have worked. <laughs> yeah, true awareness. And um, back to the Today Show. Um, looking at this, this reminds me of. Uh, fan animators doing something similar. Um, if you remember, uh, Two Snacks, when he animated Two Best Friends Play, um, his rendition of Two Best Sisters Play, it reminded me of that. So it's like, wow, this is cool. Yeah, it's, 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 it's pretty well done. 
And yeah, and, and since it is being done over a clip of theirs, yeah, it does remind me of those, um, it does remind me of those, um, fan projects where a piece of audio, whether it's from, you know, um, a game series that Two Best Sisters plays is, um, you know, parodying or just any kind of audio clip. It reminds me of those kind of projects. It's, it's fun. I like it. Yeah, like, I have to give applause on that one because that one was just too much fun. Like, it, it was done brilliantly where even the background pony is like, oh, look at me, look at me. <laughs> it's great. And I think if, um, they're doing promotional kind of stuff like this, it's, um, it's, they're, they're on the right track for promoting the movie and such like that and, and the brand as a whole. So I hope they keep it up. Um, we have several months to go until the movie. So who knows what they'll come out with next. The final push is just going to be wild. Like you, you'll see more, um, things like probably an official music video for Sai. Like she's singing something. So probably we'll get that. That would be cool. And uh, not only would we get these little pieces of advertising, um, we'll also probably be getting the uh, next batch of trailers within the next couple months. I've heard stories about that. Like, um, I'm not sure if I can mention this or not, but uh, in a recent convention over here or in the Southeast Asian region, they got exclusive yeah, things yeah. show things about the movie. So it's like, wow, that's awesome. Yeah, so they, they have the content to show off. So if they were able to show some things to that audience, they must have some stuff in the can that they can, you know, put together for an official trailer and show us eventually. So it can't be too far in the, too far in the future. And yeah, just we'll get need those. that final push. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> soon enough, soon enough. We'll get it. <laughs> yep, true, true. Well, you guys will obviously get it. It's like the States. Come on. <laughs> like, you guys should have got it first. <laughs> ah, well. <laughs> At least what's good about the internet is that everybody gets it regardless of where it's released. <laughs> oh, true that, true that. And well, convention season is coming up, so probably some lucky convention is going to get it. BronyCon probably? Uh, BronyCon would be the, would be the place <laughs> to do it. Unless, um, of course, um, well, Hasbro has their, com- their actual convention this year too. Um, HasCon, that new one. Unless the, unless they're keeping all of their big reveals and stuff like that for their own convention, um, BronyCon would be my second guess. And well, uh, talking about conventions, one of our Patreon supporters requested, I think the phrasing was, um, how to deal with conventions or how to handle conventions. And since my convention level is pretty low, I've only been attending one or two. So I'm not the right person. But Kel, you've been to multiple conventions, right? Oh yeah. I've been to many conventions. Um, I've been to conventions, um, from 2012 through 2016. So you're the best person to ask for advice since, well, my convention has been just three pony conventions and, well, uh, I, I don't really know what to say besides, um, well, the obvious of get well rested and stuff. But since you're on, do you mind sharing your knowledge with the um, audience? Oh, yeah, sure. First off, um, if it isn't a local convention, and since none of my conventions are local, I've always had to travel to get to the conventions here in the States. One thing you want to do is, um, if you're going to take transportation, is to get your ticket early. The closer that you get to the convention date and decide to actually get a plane ticket or something like that to go someplace, the prices will go up. Usually i found it's about, at least in the States, it's about a month and a half before the convention actually is going to happen is a good time to get your ticket. That's usually when prices are pretty affordable. So always get your ticket squared away pretty early on to help you save some money and don't, and you don't run into those big price hikes near the end. And once you have that squared away, you're going to have to square away your hotel room and hotel rooms are pretty costly if you're going by yourself. So I would recommend if you're going to any kind of pony convention is to room up with some friends. Usually, um, at least in most in American hotels, I don't know how it is in other countries, but at least in America, if you can usually fit about four people in a room, uh, two people to a bed, and you can split costs that way and make it very affordable. So I highly recommend. About the hotel, right? Um, what's the policy on multiple peoples in a room? Because from what I heard, like 
they only allow two people in a room or three at max? Well, it depends on. Sometimes it depends on the country. I know. I know when I went to Galicon, for instance, we tried to do the, um, um, you know, bundling people up into rooms, but there was like actual laws and policies in place that were kind of strict. And if you had two beds in a room, you had to have only two people. But here in America, usually, um, I've noticed that you can get away with having four people in a room. They don't seem to really check on that. They might have a policy that you can only have a certain number of people in the room, but they don't strictly enforce it. And we've been able to get away with it. Um, not only just, Most of the time. yeah, not, well, actually all of the time. <laughs> we have never had anybody <laughs> complain from the hotels of us having too many people in a room. It's not only just our group of friends. Um, many people do the same thing. It, um, put three or four people in a room. So that's something I would recommend doing, um, and looking into if you're coming to the States is, is definitely trying to get as many people as comfortably possible in a room to make costs go down. And on a side note of hotels, book early to get a good price. Or you could always book with some kind of uh, agency because they'll Mm -hmm. try and get a good price for you guys. I I agree with you 100% because especially with some of the bigger cons, uh, a lot of the conventions are in a hotel. And so the best rooms are, of course, the rooms that are in that hotel, and those will sell out relatively, relatively quickly as you get closer and closer to the convention date. So it's if you know that you want to go to a convention, it's good to secure those rooms that are actually in the convention hotel as soon as possible. Not only that, a lot of conventions, if you look around, uh, they offer special rates if you're going to be attending the convention. So you can save some money, and plus you're going to be in the hotel that the convention's in, so it's very convenient. And very win-win, because you can go to the um, dealer's den? Um, no, the vendor booth. Uh, is it dealer hall? I don't remember. I don't know. <laughs> it, it, it goes by a, a lot of different names. Uh, vendor hall, dealer's den, artist alleys, all those kind of names. But yeah, that's a a big plus is that um, a big plus for convenience is that if you have your room in the hotel that the convention's in, you can take all the stuff you buy right up to your room. But if you had to get a a hotel room at a, you know, a neighboring hotel, you have to carry all that stuff back with you and you got to take that into account. Yeah. And that's not going to be, well, I won't say it's not easy, but it'll be annoying in the long run. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it, it, I've had to do that before, and it, it can be kind of problematic. I understand what you mean. Uh, it's not fun. So that's the hotel. Um, earlier on when you mentioned planes, um, do the same thing with the hotel, with what you do with planes. Try to snipe for uh, cheaper plane price via packages or via dealers, because sometimes mm-hmm. they can get nicer price because, well, uh, they know stuff. Oh, yeah. And I would highly recommend using plane ticket aggregates. I think Kayak is one of them. They take a look at a lot of the different um, ticket sellers online all at once, and you can compare prices and such like that. Oh, just another little um, thing about choosing your airline. Uh, That's important as well. There's um, some differences with different airlines. If you have a lot of baggage to take with you and you're in the States, I would recommend flying Southwest Airlines. They have... Um, your first two check bags are free, if I remember right. That's a big bonus if you're going to be taking a lot of stuff to the convention or a lot of stuff from the convention. Or if you're a vendor, it's a great um, airline to fly on, help save you some money in that regard. I would also be careful, though, of airlines that offer prices that are um, basically bargain rates, uh, like Spirit Airlines and such like that. Uh, I flew Spirit once because I thought, oh, hey, here's this really cheap airline and it's going to save me a lot of money. But in the end, it actually turned out to be, there's a lot of hidden fees. The experience yeah. wasn't all that great. Um, Spirit Airlines, when I flew to the convention and back from the convention, I had to wait um, an hour and a half in the airport each time because the plane was late. So there's also going to be that. And that's not fun, especially if you're a person that has a lot of connecting flights. So oh, gosh. thankfully, I was just one way each way with those ones. But there's some you just got to watch out for. Just because the price is a little cheap, it, it might not be worth the extra fees and troubles to yeah, do that. It yeah. might be worth getting a ticket that's $100 more to just to <laughs> not have to deal with that. Sector. 
Yeah, exactly. But if you can pull it off and and you don't mind the little things, you can still fly those um cheaper airlines and such like that. It's just just be careful and make sure that you don't fall into the hidden fees. I think the phrase is. If it's too good to be true, then it's not true. <laughs> exactly, and that's exactly my experience when I flew with Spirit Airlines. It was too good to be true. It was <laughs> not a pleasant experience. <laughs> it ended up costing me just as much as if I flew another airline. Well, talking about other airlines, there's always Blue, the pony.、Um, Oh, supporting flight. Yeah, JetBlue. Yeah, they're very pony. They're <laughs> pony friendly. At least their media team is. I hear. I hear good things.、Yeah. About, I hear good things about that airline. Delta's always treated me really well. I've. Flown them a lot, so they're pretty good. And one thing I like to tell people to get is one of those portable digital scaling things. Like、um, for flights over here, from what I understand, you only have a minimum of thirty kilograms. I don't know what that's in pounds, but do the math at home、mm-hmm. for you American people. But、uh, have one of those scales on standby because. You got no idea how much you're gonna weigh back because over here we have thirty kgs free. Anything beyond that, you have to pay extra for well luggage because you exceeded your quota. Yeah, it's similar over here in the in the states.、Um, we have、um, size and、um, weight restrictions. I can't exactly remember the weight restriction. I think on a small bag that you can take into the airplane, it's like twenty five pounds. And then if you go over that, it has to be checked. So in a checked bag, with most airlines, runs you about twenty five dollars. And I got the conversion rate here is sixty six pounds. Yeah, and that's the thing also with checked luggage too. Is、um, I, I I think、um, with the the weight that you're talking about is that after a certain weight with your checked luggage, it will start costing more. So just got to be careful. And best way to do that is to just、um, find out the baggage fees for a particular airline you're going to be flying and see what works for you best when factoring in the ticket price. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And well, that's、um, we covered hotel, we covered traveling, so the convention experience itself. Like、uh, most of my cons, I never had to. Well, I had one convention where I had to deal with or dealt with、um, people from the show, so、uh, that was kind of awesome for me.、Mm-hmm. But you've been experiencing that a lot with your conventions. So, what's the rule of thumb to well? Approach this A-listers or celebrities, as they call them. Um, let's see. I'd say the best way to、um, handle them is to just treat them like people, like anybody else. Like if you're just meeting、um, a community guest for the first time, or even just meeting your friends for the first time, or something like that, just treat them like people. Don't just kind of, you know, <laughs> you have a fangasm over them. <laughs> I guess I guess you could say, is you know, just. Just give them their space and、um, just talk to them, calm and friendly like, and they'll be happy to talk to you as well. And follow the rules of the convention when it comes to like taking pictures with them or、um, autographs and stuff like that. Know that they have、um, certain things into their contract with the convention about those particular things. So don't just、mm-hmm. um, don't w- just wander up to them when you see them, you know. In the hallway and ask them for an autograph or for a picture because they might be into their contract that they can't give that out because they need to, you know, do that at the autograph booths and stuff like that. It doesn't mean you can't say like hi in the hallway or you know like give them a, a, a brief compliment or stuff like that. They, I've done that in the hall, just said hi or something like that, and goes by pretty well. So just act normal. Yeah, I, I think the phrase is just act cool. And everything will be fine. Just talk to them, and if the conversation goes your way, probably say, "Hey,、uh, could I have a picture of you?" And if they say yes, well, you're lucky. If they say no, then it'll be like any other person. So yeah, yeah, just just be careful with that kind of stuff. Um, it's good. It's good to know like the the autograph policy of the convention and stuff like that. Like um, see what、yeah. the autograph booths um are offering. If the autograph booth is offering you know autographs and pictures. They probably won't be able to give you a picture because they are. It's in their contract that they, you know,、yeah. need to take pictures at the autograph booth. But if they're not taking pictures at the autograph booth, maybe you can ask. One thing I would definitely suggest if you actually end up talking with one of these guests, 
in like a group setting, like if there's one of them and there's a group of people around them, don't try and monopolize the time that they have with those people. There's a group of them. Don't try and make it about you and them. Make sure that everybody in the group manages to get their say in and stuff like that. Don't try and interrupt other people. Just just be polite. Know, know that there's other people there that want to talk to them as well. And uh, you make sure to get what you want to say out there, but, you know, don't take up all their time. Yeah, that's true because some other people want to talk to them too because they're fans. And, well, if you guys at home got a chance to meet Larson and you're in a group setting like Calpin said, um, try asking him about Tommy's why so the room. That'll be very entertaining. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of them are a lot, a lot of them are a lot of fun, but they're also very busy at these conventions. Get what you want to say out there while making sure that other people have the same chance because they can only spend so much time in one place and before they have to go and do something else. Yeah, true, true. Everybody's busy and well, uh, it's in their contract to be busy sometimes. So. Oh yeah. I don't know anything about that. Uh, panels, um, panels, autographs, all sorts of stuff like that. So. Just make sure that you that you um allow everybody in the group a chance to talk to them. And I think there's this rule for conventions, right? Um, have six meals, two hours of sleep, and three baths. What's like that? Or I get the yeah, number wrong. Yeah, those all three of those things are important. Maybe not exactly those numbers. You can adjust <laughs> them. I mean, you can you can adjust them to what's more comfortable with you and for the people that are around you. But Definitely of uh, the things that you mentioned um, about sleep, about food, and about uh, meals. Mm-hmm. You definitely want to make sure to at least um, have in your budget. I would definitely say six meals is definitely reason- reasonable because that cover a three-day convention. But I would also plan in um, your travel days. Like say you're going to fly from your home on Thursday so you can get into the convention area You know, Thursday night, the day before the convention you want to also factor in that you might want a meal or two that day because you're going to be traveling and then say you're flying out on monday morning or something like that because you didn't want to leave sunday night because that's usually when there's a lot of con activity with fans and uh, things are wrapping up and you want to be with friends and stuff like that you want to factor in like maybe two extra meals on monday because you're going to be traveling to get home that day so Mm. it that's something to keep in consideration it can be completely different, though. If you fly in on Friday and get to the convention on Friday and you fly out on Sunday, then the six-meal thing works out pretty well. And, well, yeah, uh, pre-planning the budget, like, always have emergency cash that you don't tap because if anything happens, that is your emergency fund for getting back home. Exactly, yeah. While you can plan out the plane ticket because that will be paid for before you leave and Mm -hmm. you'll know what the hotel will cost because they'll give that to you as soon as you you know sign up for the number of days you're going to be there the best the the things that are most flexible are going to be what you're going to spend at um the vendor hall what you're going to need for food and for any other extra expenses that you might have if you like do some shopping in the area or some sightseeing or stuff like that so best thing to do is kind of you know have a plan for what you want to spend and then try and go a little bit of beyond that. And that can be like your emergency cash. And what's nice about the vendor hall, the money for like vendor hall stuff, since you don't necessarily need to have stuff from the vendor hall, you can also turn that into emergency cash if you need it. So just plan mm-hmm. accordingly how your budget goes during that weekend and you should be okay. True, true. And if I do understand right, um, some vendors nowadays use credit card or debit cards. So that's one option to tap into if you want to buy stuff in the vendor halls. Mm-hmm. It's a nice system. It really does help you um, tap into some cash at home if you only brought a certain amount in you know, actual cash to the convention. It's become a lot more prevalent now um, than it did in the early fandom. Early fandom, it was pretty much all cash-based. But nowadays, yeah. nowadays, almost everybody has a reader of some sort. So I'd say maybe about at the low end, I'd say maybe half the people in the vendor hall now have a card reader. So, Oh, that's half. <laughs> yeah. That's it, a lot. It, 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 there's a lot over here. Um in the states, at least, that have card readers, so it's it's pretty pretty prevalent. 
I think it's catching on. Oh yeah, it is, and it's just getting more and more popular and easier to do. And if you're mainly a person that uses plastic, it helps out a lot. True, 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 true. And talking about money and food, what was your eating experience like? Because I know the golden arches are everywhere, but. Uh, what was your food like? Did you eat fast food all the time, or did you went to a restaurant? I really, I really think it depends on your group, on your group of friends, or if you're just doing the solo on yourself. If you, if you're fine with fast food, yeah, you go to the go to McDonald's or any of the other places that are around there. Uh, meals will probably run you about maybe eight to ten dollars at those places for each meal so you can spend about maybe twenty dollars a day on food in my case for lunch it was usually fast food because we were so busy so we'd hit up one of the fast food places around here but during the evening um we would tend to eat out at a more formal place like a sit-down restaurant where prices can run between like maybe 15 to 20 dollars mm, understandable something like the uh, I forgot one of those Fridays or something like that. Yeah, or Fridays or Red Robin. When we go to a bunch of conventions, we tend to eat at um, places that are like local chains just to try out, you know, local local food. Because well, even up where I live, there's you know like a Fridays or Red Robin, but there might be like if you're visiting Texas, you might miss out on some good like barbecue or something like that. So you eat at some more local restaurants and stuff like that. I would recommend that too because of the experience. Like if you're going somewhere not your own location, probably, for example, if I were to go to the States, eating at a Red Robin or Wendy's would be just awesome because oh, I don't have it here. <laughs> exactly. That's something I highly recommend is if um you're in a place that you're not used to, that is new to you, to try things that you don't have where you come from. So... Mm-hmm. Try and find a restaurant that offers uh, not not only a nice experience but food that you might not have back where you come from. And if you're on the budget side, like really, really on a tight budget, like extremely tight, I don't know why you go there in the first place. But still, if you go there and you're on a tight budget for food, um, the grocery store, convenience store, they have loaf of bread, they have jam and peanut butter. Yes. So that's an option. <laughs> That is an option if you're very, very tight. You can, you could just live on peanut butter and jelly sandwiches if you really want to. There's plenty of convenience stores, um, near the conventions. So if you're really running a tight budget, that is an option. I've seen some people do that before. True, true. Personally, I would recommend it because of the experience, but still, um, <laughs> there's one way to deal with it. Exactly. So th- there's plenty of options. Just know that, um, a convention is, it is rather flexible with your, you know, the money that you bring for a variety of different things. You can take a little bit for your, from your food budget, maybe to help with vending stuff. Or if you've got all the stuff that you want from vending, you can put that towards your food budget or other things. So mm-hmm. it's not like if you dedicated $200 to vending, to the vendor's hall, it's not like you can't tap into that and use that for other things. So it's a, it's not as scary as it may seem. I think the phrase is just be flexible with with your scheduling or with your money because sometimes you don't really need to use all of it. Exactly, yeah. And I've even brought money home back from, you know, conventions because I haven't used it all. So it's not set in stone. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I think the other rule is um, be nice to everyone. Like treat how you want to be treated because mm-hmm. um, you're in a tight room with people. Sparks are about to fly. But remember, everybody's a fan of a show that they enjoy, so just be nice. Exactly, yes. Be be very friendly. And um, yeah, you are going to be, if you do bunk up with a bunch of other people, you, it can be a little crowded and stuff like that. So just be understanding of how other people feel and stuff like that. And uh, also relating back to one of the rules, <laughs> make sure to um, shower and such like that because that helps out a yeah. lot. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we don't want people to hand out um pine cones uh, fragrance for you guys like, no, no, no. <laughs> it's good it's good advice yeah so yeah I, I think that's about it unless i'm missing anything i think that's like pretty i think that's pretty good for most experiences yes mm, i think that covers almost every con 
Yeah, I think that, well, it covers ones that are in your own country. It's um, a little more difficult if you're, if you are leaving your country to go to another one. I have some advice for that because I did go to Gylacon. Um, just some simple, just some simple things. Um, you want to make sure that when you are going to another country to get your passport squared away early. Make sure they mm-hmm. do do that very early because I know here in the States, if you sign up for a passport, it could take over a month or maybe two months for it to arrive in the mail for you to use. So get that done very early. Uh, international travel is also much more expensive. It, a very good thing would be to check out exchange rates, definitely. If you, you want to make sure that that the money that you're saving is actually going to be able to cover your costs over in another country, whether or not um, your money is more valuable than the country you're going to or it's less valuable. So that can... Yeah. So it's good to watch those early on to make sure you know how much to save. I agree. I totally agree with that. Like pro tip for Americans traveling down to Southeast Asia, your money is big, so you don't have to worry about it. So if, for example, if you're traveling to Thailand for Project Sea Pony Con, mm-hmm. um, you'll be dealing with um, Thai butt. So your money is going to be a lot more than, well, let's just say that you have a lot of more expenses to play around with. So remember that traveling to another country, exchange rate is important. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And especially the other way around. Like when I went to Gallicon, the dollar isn't as strong as the euro. So you had to take into account that a dollar over in the, in, in Europe wasn't going to be, you know, worth as much. So Mm. you had to make sure to save extra for that. And also language barrier there is going to be hard too because not all countries are able to speak in English, even though English Mm -hmm. is kind of prevalent around the world. So do keep in mind with that. Definitely, yeah. If you're finding an international trip to a convention, it's always best. I would recommend definitely if it's your first time to go with friends that you know and um, have some friends that know the local language. That way, if even if you don't know it, they can help translate, and that'll make your life a lot easier. Yeah, hit up with friends. Like EQD has the Discord page, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, we do. Why not hit people up there? Like, hey, um, I'm someone from this country. I'm going to the country of X location. Could anybody want to guide me around or something like that? I mean, like, this one way oh, to meet yeah. new friends. Exactly. I, I I completely agree with you. I mean, and like in a post for like maybe um Thai Ponycon or or Project C um or or Galicon there's um you know our comment sections when we post stuff about them on our website you can ask around there for instance and maybe run into some um people that are locals over there that might be help willing to give you a helping hand a lot of people in the fandom are very helpful and they want people to experience especially locals local like Locals around Galicon or Thai Ponycon or any other, you know, convention outside of like the US, they want you to experience their convention and what it has to offer. And they're, they're probably more than willing to help you out. And the reverse is true for people that want to come from Germany to the United States or from Thailand to the United States. There's a plenty of people in the United States that'd be happy to help translate for you and such like that. Yeah, but I think if people are going to the States, uh, they, they are going to be able to speak English um, fluently, I think. So translating to English is not going to be a problem. I think it's just the accent and dialect is going to be the problem. Oh yeah, and, and, and friends can help with that too. I mean, there's there's a lot of interesting things in um, American English that it can be confusing even if you're an English speaker because there's you know <laughs> there's there's differences in how the languages languages yeah. all over the world. Like British English is completely different from American English, and American English has different you know slang and different idioms and stuff like that <laughs> that can be a little confusing if you're taking it literally. And oh yeah, that, that's going to be confusing too. Yeah, so it's always good to have some friends that can help, you know, break it down for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think oh, uh, back on to passport. Like always, keep it with you at all times. Because... Yeah, don't even keep it in your room. Keep it with you because if you lose yeah. that passport, it's going to be a pain in the butt trying to get back <laughs> to where you came from. Yeah, my father had the unfortunate event of losing his passport and. Ooh, just the 
sheer amount of stress that was on him was really, really terrible. You have mm-hmm. to go to the embassy and deal with the government workers there, and like, oh, it's not fun. Yeah, it's not fun. Keep keep your eye on your passport at all times. Make sure you know where it is. Yeah, all times. It's the most important thing. <laughs> I would say that keep always keep it in your front pocket where you can always feel it all the time. I agree with that. Yeah, and I mean that's the same advice I'd give for um, keeping your wallet if you're uncomfortable in an area. It's a, it's a nice place to have it and easy to tell if it's there still. Mm, true, true, and nobody can pickpocket you from the front because it's accessing a location that um, not everyone can touch. If you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's it's much harder for um, people to pickpocket you if it's in the front pockets. And not that it's mm-hmm. impossible, but. It's harder. You'll see it coming. You'll see it coming. <laughs> yeah, or you should, unless they're really good pickpockets. <laughs> um, another thing is, um, I, I think the hotel have safes, right? Like in the uh, yes, uh, hotels typically have safes now. Yes, not in the room, but at the front desk, kind of like, like special oh, locations, yeah. like in somewhere there. Like if you're, I'm not 100 percent sure. You could always ask them about it. Oh yeah, 100 percent. Yeah. A lot of rooms have safes in the rooms, but if there's no safes in the rooms, the um, front desk will probably have a safe. And if you're unsure if your rooms have safes or something like that, you can ask the hotel in question, and they'll be able to answer that for you. But pro tip is usually put it somewhere close to you because since you're traveling to another country, um, if you get stopped by the local inf- law enforcers, they want your proof that you have a passport so probably that yeah it's always good to have identification on you and a passport is a great form of identification especially if you're in another country and your passport has like your enter date and leave date in it i believe and all that kind of stuff so it's it's just a great way to speed up anything where that is where that is needed where identification is needed true 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 but anywho, uh, thank you, Kelpin, for well sharing some info with us because I find it helpful because even though I know some of it, um, rehearing it again as a refresher course is really um, needed because you can never be too careful when it comes to, well, passports, conventions, or, hot- well, traveling in general. Oh, yeah. There's a lot. It's a big learning process, too. I mean, I picked up a lot of this stuff just experiencing it and making my own mistakes over the years. Traveling can be hard, but it's a lot of fun and it isn't as hard as you think. It it seems daunting, yeah. but you can overcome it pretty easily and then you'll have mm-hmm. a great time. And just have fun. Be careful and have fun. That's all I can say. Exactly. <laughs> That's what I would say too. Mm-hmm. Be careful, but have fun. Yep, yep. Anyway, if you guys at home have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at mbshowgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitter. The show's Twitter account is at the MBS Show, and my Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Um, Kel, where can the good people find you, man? Um, a good way to, a good way to contact me is either at calpain at equestriadaily.com or on my Twitter, which is at calpain eqd. Alrighty then. And also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio, and also like our Facebook page. You can catch us on PonyvilleLife.com. Links will be in the show notes. And, well, we have this thing called the MBS Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast, available on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. Over there, we talk about Pony episodes, comics, movies, and other random things. For example, we recently did Season 6 discussion about what we thought of the last season. Um, you'll get, always get me, Silver Quill, and Sapphire Heart songs, and sometimes a guest. And who knows, probably if Calpain is free, he'll be able to come on and talk about something. So I'll have to see how it works the schedule, but you can count on me. Yep, yep. I can always pre-plan this. Like, It's not a must, but who knows? Uh, maybe the good audience at home would like to hear you talk about Tommy's Why So's The Room. <laughs> I had to watch that again. It's been a while. <laughs> But it's still a good movie. You know what? Watch it with Rift Tracks on. It'll be a much better movie. <laughs> I still need to watch it with Rift Tracks on. Uh, Rift Tracks on. I, I hear it's a good experience. Oh, it's totally legit. Like, oh <laughs> so, but anywho, um, if you would like to request that, you can do so on Patreon or just to support the show in general. Um, a dollar will get you a thank you. Five will get you a topic of discussion or ask us to review something. And talking about thank yous, I would like to thank Lurker Cat, Violet Genesis, 
uh, Nendrocatoria, Starstream, and also Master of Light. Thank you guys for supporting the show. And as Doggo at the background has said, like, get on with it. So anyway, I've been Norman Sanzo. And this is Calvin. And we'll guys catch you next week with another amazing and fun episode. See ya. Bye.